Today, I saw a video from Math Letters about Sierpinski Triangle. I've tried to call it myself to see if it's really working. First, let's watch the video. This will blow your mind. Start by drawing three points in the shape of a triangle. To start us off, choose a point anywhere within this triangle. Now, we'll draw more points by repeating two simple rules over and over. The first rule tells us to randomly select one of the original three points. For example, suppose we choose three. The second rule tells us to move halfway from the point we just drew toward the selected point and draw another point. That's it. Now we repeat the two rules from the point we just drew. Randomly select one of the original three points. Suppose we choose point one this time. Move halfway from the point we just drew toward point number one and draw another point. Now we'll repeat once again. After each new point, we'll randomly select one of the original three points, move halfway toward it and draw another point. The question is, what happens if we continue to draw hundreds or even thousands of points using these two simple rules over and over? Well, here's what it looks like after 100 points. And here's what it looks like after 1000 points. And finally, here's what it looks like after 25,000 points have been drawn. As if by magic, this eerie image emerges. It's known as the Sierpinski Triangle, and it's a famous fractal. Amazingly, although the points are drawn in a random manner, the Sierpinski Triangle will always materialize after enough points are drawn. All right, we'll see. First things first, I will start by creating my files. This is a very simple web project, so all we need is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files. So create index.html, index.js, and style CSS. After that, I will go into the HTML file and create the HTML5 template. In the head tag, link the CSS file so that we can get the styles. And in the body tag, let's create canvas tag with an ID of my canvas. This will allow us to manipulate the canvas with JavaScript. And of course, we're gonna need a script tag with source file of index.js. With that, we are done with the HTML file. Let's type some CSS code. Here, I just want to set my canvas position properties. So I say position absolute, top zero and left zero. Finally, give width and height to 100 so that we are 100% sure that our canvas is inside of the browser and it doesn't shift at all. Let me open this with live server and snap the browser at right of the screen. And from now on, we will be only writing JavaScript code. First of all, I need to create the canvas object. You can use get element by ID function to get the canvas we just created. Copy the ID and paste it here. After that, you can get the context and store a variable called CTX. I want to make the canvas use full width of the browser so set the canvas width to window width and canvas height to window height. If these concepts seem so foreign to you at this point, I can suggest you to watch the full course about creative coding. As always, the link is in the description. All right, moving forward in order to render lots of points in the canvas, I better create a class to be more efficient. So I call it point and it's gonna take X and Y parameters for the constructor. We can set the radius for now, and we might want to change this in the future. There's gonna be draw function as well, and I will use the basic code block to draw a circle. Start with begin path and use the arc function. Here we provide x, y, radius, start angle, and end angle parameters. This field is waiting for radians, not degrees. So math.pi times two gives us a complete circle. And finally, I'm gonna use fill style here instead of a stroke. Okay, it's time to decide the rectangle corners. I want to make this project responsive to any screen size, so it's a good idea to use window width and window height. Let's start with the top of the triangle. I will use the class we just created. Okay, here for the X value, I'm gonna put it into the center of the window. So let me say window inner width divided by two. For the y value, we need a little margin to the top, so 50 will be enough. Call the draw function, and here it is, our very first point. Um, this is too small right now, I can make the radius five, or maybe 10, so you can see better. Okay, let's keep it five for now. Also do the same steps for bottom left and bottom right corners. This time I'm gonna say 50 for x. 
window inner height minus 50 for the Y, and it's visible at the bottom left, just like this. Lastly, write the code for the bottom right corner. This is going to be width minus 50 and height minus 50. Now that we have all three points of the triangle, we can create the triangle array and store these points inside of it. Ok guys, it's time to make this project interactive, so that any user can click and see the different outcomes. To do that, I will use JavaScript event listener function, and this is gonna listen click events, and let's write the triggered function. When this click event occurs, I want to create a new point, right? This is gonna be the first point that will trigger others. We can use the point class again, and pass the event x and event y parameters, to get the user's click position. Now we can call the draw method. Ok, let's see if this is working. And yeah, we can put a circle by simply clicking on the canvas. One thing to notice though, we only want this event listener to run once. Ok, I shouldn't be able to put the second circle. To do that, we can call the once field and set it to true here. Perfect. Next up is to draw the rest of the circles. I'm just gonna comment to set a reminder here, and let's write the draw rest function up here. It's gonna take only one parameter, which is called pre point, and it is representing the last point in the loop. We also need to define more variables called random corner and middle point. This is gonna decide the randomly selected corner at each iteration like top, left or right. And the second one is gonna be the center location of the distance between the preview point and the selected corner. Alright, and finally what we need is a for loop of course. For simplicity, set the boundary to 10 for now, and first job here is to get the randomly picked corner. This is really easy to do because we have a triangle array, but unfortunately, JavaScript doesn't have an integer random generator. So let's write our own. We can just call it here already, get random integer between 0 and 3. And declare the function up here. I'm gonna use math floor and math random here, and this is just a basic formula to get a random integer with given minimum and maximum values. Ok, so now we should be able to get one random corner, Check it by logging to the console. For loop worked 10 times, so we have 10 random corner output, which is exactly what we expected. Next mission is to find the middle point between the corner and the previous point. And here I am just basically adding x values and divide by 2 to get the average x value. We can apply the same for the y as well. And don't forget to draw the middle point. Finally, change the previous point to the middle point because it is the last point right now. And with that being said, our code should be working now. Let's give it a try. It draws 10 points because we iterated the for loop 10 times, so it looks like it is working. Let me check the console if we have any warnings or errors. Everything looks great, so go ahead and increase the point count. I will try 100. Ok, still it is hard to say if we are getting a pattern or not. Let's try 1000. Now it is much more obvious that they are following a pattern, right? What if I make it 10,000? It looks like it is working, right? Even if I click at the dead areas, it then goes back to the pattern after some mistaken steps. Ok, so the view is not good because 5 is too big for a radius. I'm gonna set it to 1. And maybe finally we can increase the loop count to 100,000. And this is the final result. Please let me know your ideas and suggestions in the comments. By the way, this concept is known as chaos game if you want to make a further research. 
And finally, if you like this video, please share and subscribe to see more videos like this and see you in the next one.